spend the day with me from making breakfast in the morning to making a big Thanksgiving meal in under five hours. Not all that's hands-on time, but turkeys take a long time to cook, so I'll be staying busy while the turkey is in the oven and sharing lots of my favorite Thanksgiving recipes. I had the perfect opportunity to film this video a few weeks ago and have it edited and ready for you all this Thanksgiving week in case you need some recipe inspiration. So I do have a child with an early November birthday and the request for the birthday party menu was a big Thanksgiving meal. So this was just perfect. So I had to do some grocery shopping and stock up for my big meal plans here. And you do see eggs and dairy on my counter from the store. That's because of our, you know, poor breeding plan. <laughs> I don't have any milk right now. Both of my cows are dry and all of my old hens are not laying and my new ones that I got in June just haven't started yet. So it's a little bit of a tragedy, but that's okay. I'm just doing some organization here filling my mason jars because I like my pantry to look pretty. All right, so tomorrow is when I'm going to start the big cooking day for the Thanksgiving meal. Now, the night before, I'm just making some bone broth. I, I had a roast that I made, so the bones are in the pot. Everything's in the pot. I'm just going to fill it with water, simmer it all night, and then I'll have beef broth in the morning. And, you know, it's funny to me seeing my big, like, nighttime pregnant belly compared to now it is the next morning and my belly looks much smaller. That is just pregnancy life. <laughs> now, when you get toward the end, your belly just looks huge the entire day, no matter what time of day it is. But first and second trimester, it's just funny how, how there's a noticeable difference in the morning and in the evening. So what you see here is a brand new French press. My cheap little one that I've had forever finally bit the dust. So I splurged a little bit, got myself a really pretty one. I'll link it in the description. It is a La Crusade French press. All right. This is the cinnamon raisin swirl bread that I showed you. Gosh, it's been a couple weeks ago by now. And I have just been making this all the time. I've been making lots of it. And this morning I'm going to use a whole loaf, a whole Pullman loaf of, of this bread to make French toast casserole. And just look how pretty this is. We've talked about this before, but making swirl breads in the Pullman pans really does help, you know, eliminate air pockets. And it just gives you a pretty nice swirl. So I am just cubing, dicing, whatever you want to call it, this loaf of bread. And I've got a 9 by 13 casserole dish here. Just going to put this all in there. Now I could have prepared this the night before and let it all soak in the fridge and then just popped it in the oven in the morning. That's fine. If you think about it the night before, I didn't think about it <laughs> last night though. I was pretty tired by the time I got my bone broth going. So now I'm just going to crack lots of eggs. When you make French toast casserole, you use lots of eggs, six to eight eggs. I, I probably used around around six or eight eggs here. And you'll see I used them in, in a minute. You'll see I used a mix of our fresh eggs and store eggs. And look at the color difference of the yolks. You can totally tell which ones are fresh. So I'm, I'm pouring in maybe two and a half cups of milk, two to, th two to three cups of milk <laughs> along with, let's just call it eight eggs and a tablespoon of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla extract. I'm going to mix this up. And what you see in my hand there, I've got lots of new tools lately, is a hand mixer. I have not had a hand mixer in a couple years because mine broke a couple years ago and I just didn't replace it. So I've got all the new stuff today. All right, now I'm pouring this mixture over. Oh, I totally forgot to tell you. In that mixture, the French toast mixture with the egg and milk and cinnamon is a cup, yes, a cup of brown sugar. Mix that all up, poured it over, and now I'm baking that at 350 for let's just say about 45 minutes. We'll see how long it takes. And then I'll put the recipe in the description. 
So I'm using my pretty French press here to pour a couple cups of coffee. My husband does not drink coffee, but we have a guest this morning, which you cannot see. It's my husband's uncle. He came over for breakfast with us. There are, it's funny, you know, in a lot of my videos, there are guests in my home and I don't plan it that way, but I never turn anyone down if they want to come over to my house. Like, come on in. I might be filming, um, but that's another reason I, I've shared that I do the voiceovers. That way I can still talk to whoever is in my house. So I just added a stick of butter and eight ounces of uh, cream cheese. Now I'm adding four cups of powdered sugar and a little bit of vanilla extract to make the cream cheese icing, like it's a, like a cream cheese buttercream icing that will go on top of this French toast casserole. So once again, not low sugar. And look at this, just thick and creamy just what the doctor ordered. I did end up covering my French toast casserole about 25 to 30 minutes in because the top was looking a little bit brown. So I just used a jelly roll pan to cover it. You can use tin foil or a pan, whatever. That way the top doesn't get burnt. But I wanted the uh, center to be finished. You know, you can kind of like give your pan a little shake. And if you still see the egg mixture looking liquidy, then it's not done yet. But this did take about 45 minutes. So I'm just spreading this icing over top. And this was such a hit. Everybody loved it. It was delicious. So I've, I've made French toast casserole many times before. This wasn't new, but this is the first time I made it with the cinnamon raisin swirl bread. And that definitely kicked it up a notch. All right. Now I cleaned up. That was more like a brunch. That was a really, really late breakfast. So I did some a little bit of cleanup and I'm going to get started and make the turkey. So this is a big Thanksgiving meal. I am doing a whole turkey and I'm roasting it in the oven. So to prevent it, you know, one thing I want to do to prevent it from drying out is I'm going to inject it. So I'm making an injection mixture here and I'm going to need some of this bone broth. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, strain the bone broth first. Then I'll start my injection mixture, inject the turkey, get that going, and then work on everything else because you don't want to be waiting on your meat. That's what takes the longest. A whole turkey takes a really long time. Um, any large cut of meat, it's going to take a while. So start that first when you're preparing a big meal, especially when you're cooking the same day. So nice, rich beef bone broth from roast that I had made um, a couple days before. It's just fabulous. So got a half cup of butter. That is what I'm going to get started with for this injection mixture. I am adding some hot sauce because my husband asked me to add it. <laughs> it wasn't on my list. I wasn't going to add that, but you can add it if you want. And then I'm just going to add about a cup. We'll call it a cup. A cup or two of uh, bone broth. I would say it was a cup. And then about a tablespoon of onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and um, not a whole tablespoon of pepper, <laughs> maybe two teaspoons of pepper, a little bit less pepper, and whisk this all up. All right, it's time for the apron to go on because we're going to start <laughs> handling the turkey here. Now, I do not put stuffing inside of a turkey, and that is because that is a huge um, source of food poisoning because turkey, you know, meat takes a long time to cook and the juice from the meat, like the blood and everything, can really be absorbed in that stuffing and not get cooked all the way. And then you're eating just like raw poultry juice. Ugh, disgusting. Anyway, so that's just not something I do. Sorry to offend if you did. So I am stuffing my um, turkey with a quartered apple, quartered onion, quartered lemon, and I just have some random herbs from the garden. We've already had our first frost, but my but sage is, is pretty frost hardy. So I, I've got lots of sage. I'm going to put some of that in there. And then I had some dried thyme um, that I had hung in the kitchen. So adding that in there too. And the next thing I'm going to do is just start the injection process. So you you don't want a million holes in your turkey. So just make like one hole in each big piece of meat, like whether it's the breast, 
the thigh, the leg, whatever, and then kind of poke it in all different directions as you're injecting your meat. I hope that makes sense. You'll see what I'm saying. Like you'll see me do it right here. I'm not taking the syringe out every time and making a new hole. I'm just put, poking it in different directions. And my husband was actually standing there watching me the whole time, um, telling me what to do because, you know, he's got to do that. He actually usually always cooks like big cuts of meat like this. And he usually does our Thanksgiving turkey. He either deep fries it or he smokes it and he does all the injecting. So it was making him just very anxious watching me do the injecting because it's not the exact way he would have done it. So, you know, he probably would have done it better, but that's okay. We survived. All right. I did not use all of that injection mixture, which is a good thing because I am going to season it a little bit more with some dried herbs. I just have some sage, rosemary, and thyme here, and then use that as my rub as well. So I'm rubbing that under the skin of my turkey here, and then I'm going to rub it all over the top as well. Now what you didn't see is when I was preparing this turkey, I, I washed it off really well. Now, turkey takes, if you buy a frozen turkey, it takes a long time to thaw out, gosh, maybe like 24 hours for every five pounds or something crazy like that. You need several days to thaw it out in the fridge. So keep that in mind. I'm posting this video on Sunday. If you haven't thought about thawing your turkey out yet, it's a good time to think about that. So once our turkey was thawed, then I did rinse it and wash it really well. Um, patted it dry before I started the prep process. All right, so now it's all ready to go. And I, I am roasting my turkey at 325. And it's going. Later on, I'll cover it with some, tent it with some foil. But in the beginning, I want it to get, you know, nice and browned. And I'm just going to move on to the next job. Now, you guys have seen me make my sweet potato casserole before, and that's what I'm making starting with some sweet potatoes from the garden that I have saved in the basement, wash those up, and I'm just going to bake those with the skins on. And my, I have two ovens. What I'm doing right now is I'm putting a probe. My ovens have probes that plug into the inside of the oven, and then, the, and then it plugs into your meat, and then the oven, the screen actually reads the temperature, the internal temperature of the meat, so that it stops cooking when your meat reaches your set temperature, you know, rather than setting a timer. It's actually really neat. These are Wolf ovens, by the way. And one of them is out of order. What a horrible time to not be working. I just discovered that this morning. I really needed both of my ovens today, but this is just going to put me to the test. You know, I have about five hours from the time I started the turkey until the time that our guests will all be here and be hungry and ready to eat. I've had that much time to make all these things and I've got one small oven. It's my big oven, my big wide one that's out. So we'll just make it work. Right now I'm working on a pie crust. This is a sourdough pie crust. I've made this for you guys too. A lot of the stuff that I'm making today, I have made before. I'm making a couple new things. So the recipes will be linked in the description. All the recipes will be linked. Um, but this one I have made before and it is on my blog. It's a really popular one on my blog because it uses lots of sourdough discard. Uh, one batch uses a, a whole cup. So I'm using, I'm making one and a half batches of this pie crust because I'm actually going to be making an apple slab pie on a cookie sheet. So it's, you know, just a more surface area that I need to cover with my crust. I, I've never made um, a slab pie like this before. First time. So we'll see how it goes. Just preparing my pie crust as usual. I'm really a big fan of the food processor. Just works great. Keeps the mess contained. So maybe an hour and a half in, I'm, I'm going, going to go ahead and uh, tent my turkey here. It's starting to look nice and brown, and I don't want the top to burn. That's not good. You don't. You want your turkey to look pretty. I mean, most importantly is that it tastes good. But you want it to look pretty too. So that's the reason for tenting here and we will move on to the next task which is just preparing this pie pie is something that you really want to cool so if you've ever made the mistake of preparing a pie with just enough time to like pull it out of the oven and eat it 
you know that that's a big mistake because it's it needs time to set it needs time to cool that's why you know we picture like grannies with pies in their windowsill the pies must cool so pie is next on the list you know I just have like a mental list running of the order that I need to do things in because I know how long things take I know what needs to set up I know what needs to cool and so that's what it is so I do have some extra kids over here if you see other children in the background we've got some kids that came early and are just hanging out and playing with my kids and um that's what it always is here we always have lots lots of activity going on at the house and I, I love it that way so I've got lots of apples here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 apples sitting on my counter, and I know that I had five left when I was finished, so I used seven apples. There you go. So probably about 12 cups. That bowl behind me holds about 12 cups of chopped, you know, finely chopped apples. And then um, juiced one lemon, mix that in with my apples. Now I'm adding about a quarter cup of flour, a cup of sugar, a um, tablespoon of cinnamon, and about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and allspice to a bowl here. I'm going to mix that up. And that is what I'm going to pour into my apples. Stir that all up and let that set while I roll out my pie crust. So my pie crust has been chilling in the fridge this whole time. You want it to stay cold. Any, any time you make anything like that, you know, with butter, pie crust, biscuit dough, pastry dough, you want to work quickly and chill the dough when you're not working on it so that it, it stays cold and the butter doesn't melt. When the butter melts, it will be very greasy and hard to handle. So right now it's just me at home with my daughter, some of her friends, and the toddler. Because my husband took the boys and some of their friends and went paintballing. That was part of the birthday uh, schedule, part of the birthday agenda. So it was all girls and our little Ernie and the girls kept Ernie very, very busy. You know, I know that people have funny thoughts and opinions about age gaps, but it's just been the sweetest thing in my family. You know, my older kids just love the baby. They absolutely love having a baby around. And when they have friends over, the friends love the baby. Um, you know, it's just... <laughs> A lot of families, well, the, the particular family that I have the kids over, they have a lot of kids, but a lot of families don't have babies around. So, you know, the kids really enjoy when they do get to be around a cute, sweet little baby. All right, I have my, um, oh, cookie sheet there. And I rolled out half of my dough for the bottom layer of the crust. And I put that in the freezer to keep it cold while I roll out the second half. Um, now I'm going to pour my apples and any any juice that, you know, you got from the lemon and sugar. Just pour that all over the pie crust, just like making a normal pie, but not in a pie pan, <laughs> in a cookie sheet. Now I did something different here. I had some whey caramel, and I've showed you my whey caramel before, that I just kind of drizzled over the apples here and it did actually turn out really well. I wasn't sure if I would like it with better or without, but I really liked it. Um, it, it was really good. It was a good addition and it set up nicely. It didn't ruin the texture or anything. So now I'm just rolling out this top sheet of pie crust and this actually ended up being a good amount. So the one and a half times recipe, I just guessed on that, <laughs> but it, it turned out great. I was able to make it work just fine. So I'm just fold, fold it over the edges, crimping the edges because that's my favorite way to seal a pie crust. Everyone has their own favorite way. Now, here I did something that I won't do again. I've been experimenting with different washes on baked goods, and I'm using heavy cream here. That is one way that people like to do a wash. But you'll see at the very end of this video, when you see um, 
the crust. You just didn't, it just didn't get that golden flaky look like you do with an egg wash. But now I can say I've tried it and I'm not going to try it again. I'm going to stick with the egg wash and with a little sugar kind of sprinkled over that. All right, so I actually put that in the back in the freezer, that assembled slab pie, because I have a full oven. I'm not ready to put it in just yet. Um, I'm checking the turkey, and it looks good. The probe looks good. I'm just checking the temperature in a couple different spots to make sure. I had the probe in the breast, but I'm checking in the thigh, checking everywhere. Really want to make sure that this big, humongous bird is cooked through. It's a bummer. When you prepare a big piece of meat like this, let it cool, it looks pretty. You cut into it and it's not finished. So now I have some more oven space. I'm going to start my apple slab pie. My sweet potatoes have been done baking for a while and I let them cool. It's very difficult to <laughs> peel and handle hot sweet potatoes. So I just peeled them all and added my baked sweet potatoes to a bowl and I'm adding in some butter, some heavy cream, some brown sugar. Like I said, I you, you all know this recipe. You've seen me make it before. It'll be in the description. And I'm just going to mix this this mixture up with my fancy new uh, hand mixer here. <laughs> Saving all my scraps for the chickens. They will be very, very happy chickens. You know, I don't worry about food waste because we have chickens that, you know, turn any scraps or anything into eggs. And when we have pigs, then they turn it into bacon. All right, so now I've got a little 9 by 9 square uh, casserole dish that I put my filling in, scooped some out for the baby to keep him happy, keep him busy. And I need to make my pecan crumb topping. Um, you know, one thing I haven't tried yet that a few of you have suggested is doing marshmallows and the pecan crumb topping. Maybe I'll try that at some point because I actually like marshmallows. I'm a fan. I just have some people in my family who don't like the marshmallow version and that is why I make it this way. So I'm hesitant to mix that up and try anything new but we shall see. I am going through a lot of butter today. I've already gone through my butter stash from my cows. It wasn't the greatest stash this year because of the breeding that happened and the timing. And it's such a bummer. Um, but what do you do? So <laughs> I have my crumb topping on and I'm going to bake this. I I'm putting my casserole dish on my jelly roll pan because I have a feeling it was really full and I have a feeling it might kind of spill over the sides and I don't want to smoke my house up and like smoke my guests out. That's the worst, you know? You cook a big meal, it smells delicious and your house is all smoky. All right, this is another one of my um, pandemie sourdough loaves that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago that I've been making so much. And I'm going to cube this one up. This is a plain one. This is obviously not a cinnamon raisin swirl. I have two of these loaves sitting out because I wasn't sure how many I would use. I'm cubing this up to make breadcrumbs for the stuffing. You gotta have stuffing on Thanksgiving. Now, I know stuffing is just controversial. People either love it or they hate it. And people get really p particular about the type of stuffing. Some people really like the boxed stuff, you know, stovetop. All right, so I'm just cubing this up, putting it on my massive cookie sheet here that I, I put some olive oil down. Um, anyway, yeah, this, this is obviously not box stuffing. This is sourdough stuffing. So that might be something new for you. Sour, a new use for your sourdough bread. I haven't tried it with artisan bread. This is actually the first time I'm making it. This is something new for me, but it's my mom's recipe. So like I've had this recipe before and it's my husband's favorite thing. I'm just drizzling some more, uh, avocado oil over top, some salt and some pepper. I don't know how much, just sprinkle until it feels right. <laughs> anyway, putting these at the, in the oven. My oven is set at 375 now because that's what my pie was baking at. So that's where the breadcrumbs are going to go in at. And I'll report back and let you know how that turned out. Now I'm going to just keep this moving um, and get my mashed potatoes ready. So 
I am peeling and dicing Yukon Gold potatoes and I make one pot mashed potatoes. So I peel and dice my potatoes, put them in a big Dutch oven, pour some milk over, not enough to cover them, but like about three fourths the way up the side and then just simmer on low. Oh, and I added a stick of butter in there too. Um, and that's how I make my mashed potatoes. You'll see at the end, I just mash them up and they're delicious. So you don't have to boil your potatoes. Now what I'm working on is uh, corn. I'm making cheesy cream corn, homemade cream corn. This is the best cream corn, the only way to eat cream corn. And when I make this, people love it. They ask for the recipe every time. It is always a hit. So I will share this recipe with you. I have four 10 ounce bags of frozen corn going, so this is a huge batch. <laughs> and I did add in um, some butter and a little bit of bone broth just to make sure that my corn doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan there. And um, I need to check on everything in the oven and then get back to cutting up my veggies for my stuffing. So my pie was finished. I'm gonna let that sit to the side and cool. You can see my breadcrumbs in the bottom of the oven and they're looking really good. They're not uh, burning or anything. I know a lot of people make breadcrumbs at a much lower temp, like 250, but these are looking just great at like 375. All right, I, I had to do some rearranging. So I'm, my uh, sweet potato casserole came out of the oven for a little bit. Now it's gotta go back in. Now I am dicing up everything that's gonna go into my stuffing. So quite a bit of celery there. I've got two whole onions several apples. I think I used the five apples that I had setting out from earlier. So, you know, I'm kind of, I'm using my mom's recipe. I'm kind of winging it a little bit, but it is her basic recipe and it just turned out so good. And then I've got leeks here, lots of leeks. Gosh, I don't know how many, how many do you see there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight leeks. A lot of them just going to dice them up. Very, very small. Got a cutting board full of good stuff here. So, you know, you can't say that I did not serve anything green in my Thanksgiving meal. Cause look at all that green. That's a lot of green. I'm adding this to one of my big Dutch ovens that I had um, some, some butter in, and I'm just gonna let this simmer. Let this, all of this sweat and simmer and reduce down. And while I do that, gonna take the foil off my turkey plate it up and get it ready because I'm actually getting really close here to being finished like really really close I've got the drippings for my turkey got to whip up some gravy for that you know it's that time of year and look look at this turkey it's just beautiful turned out just perfect it's that time of year where it's getting dark a lot earlier which is depressing but hey that's okay so it's still pretty early, but you're going to see it's going to start getting dark here. And I'm getting pretty close to when everyone's going to be, you know, starting to arrive. So my corn in the back, I'm adding some heavy cream. Like I said, this is cream corn. The secret ingredient I'll add in a minute, which is cheese, which just takes it up a notch. Going to season with some salt and pepper. Stir all of that up and put the lid back on and let it simmer on low. You really want this to be on low, your your corn, because um, the cream, you know, you don't want that to burn and like stick to the bottom. All right, so you can see that everything is um, looking really good there for the stuffing. Now I am adding about a cup of cheese. So just your favorite, your favorite shredded cheese, whatever cheese you like, something that is really melty, melts really good. All right, I'm adding the turkey drippings to the bone broth, the beef bone broth I had saved from earlier. I had a little bit extra bone broth from earlier that wouldn't fit in my gallon jar. I added the turkey drippings to that and that's what I'm gonna use to make my gravy and finish my stuffing. I'm just checking on everything here, stirring everything. Like I'm so close to being finished. So, you know, I really, my goal was to finish this entire meal in five hours, which for, I wasn't cooking like hands on that whole time. But you know, the turkey, takes a long time and then you have to let it cool the pie you have to let it cool so start to finish it's it's that much time and I'm gonna be like right on time here so I'm just making a roux for my gravy uh roux just butter flour one part butter to one part flour so I think I did like a you know four tablespoons of butter four tablespoons of flour something like that and then I'm slowly adding my turkey dripping slash broth mixture whisking that up until I get a nice 
texture for my gravy and I'll season it with salt and pepper. I am seasoning my um, veggies that I simmered down for my stuffing with, I think I use the same seasoning I used to rub the turkey. I, I used sage, rosemary, and thyme, I believe. Now I'm adding in two pounds of ground sausage, pork sausage. I added in, I think, a cup of dried cranberries. The recipe is in the uh, description. And all of my breadcrumbs. I had to switch this to a bigger pot because I used too small of one. I, I doubled the recipe that is my mom's recipe. And I just needed a lot more space than I thought. These breadcrumbs, these sourdough breadcrumbs turned out so well. So I was very pleased with this. Now I'm just topping this stuffing off with the rest of my bone broth. Gonna put the lid on and let this all kind of just come together. And that's really it for my stuffing. Now I'm, my potatoes that have been simmering in the butter and the milk, I'm just using my hand mixer to mix them up until they're nice and smooth and creamy. And that is it. I'm finished. I made it in under five hours. My Thanksgiving meal is finished. My sweet potato casserole, the cheesy cream corn you see right here. That's always just so good. Creamy mashed one pot mashed potatoes. Got my turkey gravy and let's see here the turkey looks fabulous I'll have my husband cut that the stuffing turned out so well if you like stuffing if you don't then I'm probably not going to convert you and the slab apple pie all right now Wednesday I will have another video for you guys it won't be too long but I will use all of the leftovers I had and make something with that and I will show you a plate like a really pretty plate of all this food plated up I just didn't have time because all of our guests were arriving. So I hope I gave you some good recipe ideas and that you enjoy your Thanksgiving.